Welcome back to another Mech Deck Tech. Today we have our fourth and final pre-con upgrade guide for Modern Horizons 3 featuring Eldrazi Incursion, helmed by Ulalek Fused Atrocity. So Ulalek is a Wooburg, but also kind of just colorless commander. Uh, they are a 2-5. Whenever you cast an Eldrazi spell, you could pay two colorless specifically to copy that spell and all other things that are basically on the stack. As always, we're going to be taking out 10 cards that don't quite fit the, uh, the theme of the deck and adding in 10 new cards that are highly synergistic, giving us a little bit more consistency, a little more value. And after all that's done, we're going to go over a handful of cards for consideration, cards that are a little expensive, maybe touches the mana base a little bit, uh, but just didn't quite make that top 10. Starting off the list of 10 cards that didn't quite make that cut, we have Angelic Aberration. So this is a 6 cost, 4-4, four, four, with Flying and Vigilance. It's also Devoid. It's an Andrazi Angel, so it could work with our commander in terms of having the ability to copy it and like everything else that's on the stack. Uh, but honestly, I just don't feel like the value is great here. So it's a 6 cost, 4-4 four, four Flyer. Not bad, not bad. When it enters the battlefield, you can sack any number of creatures with base power and toughness of one and one or less, and create that many Eldrazi Angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance. So the copying of it doesn't make sense at all, right? You're not gonna you can't sacrifice things twice. You're not getting extra value for sacking these things and generating new things to then sack again. Um, we do create some Scions, we do create some Spawns, so like, I could see why the card's in the deck, but I feel like we have stronger Eldrazi to play than this. So they're gonna go. Following up that Angel, we have a Kindred Instant Shapeshifter with Crib Swap. So it is a 3 mana, instant piece of removal for a single target, it exiles them and gives them a 1-1 one -one Shapeshifter. Uh, it's... It's honestly expensive for what it does. You may as well just run Path of Exile over it. You know, Swords to Plowshares. You know, any number of other cards that just sort of do what it does, but better. And obviously the fact that, like, it is every creature type does allow you to use it with the commander and like, oh, now I'm going to pay five and get rid of two things. But at five mana... You know, we're at, we're at board wipe territory at that point. You know, we, we could do better. Elder Deep Fiend follows that up. It costs 8 mana. It's a 5-6. It is an Eldrazi Octopus. So again, we're sticking with the Eldrazi theme, which is nice, but like... Eh. It does have an Emerge ability. I think the Emerge mechanic is interesting from this set. You know, basically allowing you to sacrifice weaker creatures to kind of level them up. It also does enter the battlefield and tap a bunch of permanents, and like could copy that effect on the stack as well. But again, I just feel like we have better value elsewhere. Tapping things down isn't the same as removing them, right? Maybe it makes room for blockers, but outside of that, it's really just not doing that much. Speaking of not doing that much, Imprisoned in the Moon. So, three cost, aura. You could enchant a creature, land, or a planeswalker. And it basically just turns it into, like, a little mana rock that taps for colorless. Um, again, I'd rather just remove them. This, these kind of nonsense things where it's like, oh, it's gone temporarily. They're going to get it back when they remove this. Uh, just remove the creature. Why, why are we playing games? And also, you're technically ramping them right in the process. So, just not great in my mind. Inversion Behemoth costs 4 mana. It is a 2-9. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you can switch the power and toughness of each of any number of target creatures until end of turn. Um, hilarious against, like, some defender decks, maybe? Right, because then you're just like, oh yeah, you're a 0-4? No, you're a 4-0. You just die. Uh, but how often are you coming across that? Obviously, it's good for itself. It becomes a 9-2 instead of a 2-9. But again, just the Eldrazi don't need this. It's weird tech. We're getting rid of it. Kozilek's Return is an instant for 3 mana. 
You're going to deal two damage to each creature, and whenever you cast an Eldrazi creature spell with seven mana or greater, you can return it from the grave, and if you do, it's going to deal five damage to each creature. Again, like... Three, da three mana, two damage to every creature isn't bad. You might deal, like, a blow to some, like, token focus decks or something. But... We could do better. Suffer the Past is an X spell, so it's X and a black pip. Uh, it's an instant speed. You get to exile X cards from a player's graveyard for each card exiled this way. They're going to lose a life. You're going to gain a life. I think in general, Suffer the Past is a half-decent card. Probably really cool in Aristocrat decks. It's a little bit of graveyard hate on top of that. So I think it's interesting, but it's not really what this deck's trying to do. So... You know, I think we could do without. Ugin's Insight. So this is a 5 cost sorcery. We're going to scry X, where X is the highest mana value among permanents you control, and then draw 3 cards. The Eldronthi definitely have high mana values, so like, decent scry, the draw 3 on top of it's pretty nice. But I think we're going to get better card draw elsewhere. We don't need this. Ulamog's Nullifier. So this is a 2-3 for 4, you could flash it in, it does have flying when it enters the battlefield. You could put 2 cards that your opponent owns in exile into their grave, and if you do, you get to counter the spell. Um, super situational counter. And then, like, I guess the fact that it's a 2-3 flyer is cool, but eh. And last up for these removals is the Warping Whale. So this is a 2-cost instant. Exile's a tiny boy. Okay. Counters specifically a sorcery. Feels weird. Or creates you a scion. Um, which could sack for mana. Which just feels bad. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that. Like you're paying two mana to get one mana. Uh, no. No, 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 no. Maybe in like a token sacrifice stack, because it is colorless, like you could run it and it's like, oh, I have a bunch of like token doublers or triplers or whatever. You know, I'm generating value, but in this stack, I mean, like it's really, it feels like it's here for that second effect, which is just a counter of sorcery specifically. But, you know, again, I just, I feel like we could do better than that. But with those out of the way, we are going to move up into our additions to the deck. So we're going to start off with a Path of Annihilation. So this is a Devoid Enchantment. Whenever it enters the battlefield, we're going to create two Eldrazi spawn. And Eldrazi's we control tap to add a mana of any one color. So this turns all of our spawns and scions, and really all of our Eldrazi, but like we're going to be mainly using these spawns and scions to do it into mana dorks that we don't have to sacrifice. On top of that, whenever we cast a 7 cost or higher Eldrazi spell, we're going to gain a little bit of life. Which, like, this isn't a life gain deck per se, but, like, it is a nice little bonus. Following that up, we have Echoes of Eternity. So this is an Eldrazi enchantment, the Eldrazi part being pretty relevant, because, again, we could copy this with our commander. If a triggered ability of a colorless spell you control or a colorless permanent you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. Whenever you cast a colorless spell, you immediately get to copy it and you could choose new targets for the copy. Honestly, Echoes of Eternity is just a powerhouse in this deck. You know, it's going to let you double up all your spells, which are already powerful. It's also going to double up your commander's trigger. Like... You know, we're making copies upon copies upon copies. So, we're really going to overwhelm the board with this bad boy. Urza's Incubator follows that up. I wasn't lucky enough to pull a copy from my box, but, like, really wish I had. It's only, like, ten bucks to pick up right now, so it's pretty reasonable. And it's good in any kind of kindred deck. Uh, but it's a three-cost artifact. When it enters, you choose a creature type, and creature spells of the chosen type cost two less to cast, so just good mana reduction, it'll be a good time. Following that up, we have Basalt Monolith. 
So Basalt Monolith isn't in the deck from the start, but Forsaken Monument is, so it's an easy add for me. So with Basalt Monolith and Forsaken Monument on the field, you have infinite colorless mana. And with all that mana, you know, we're able to cast basically every spell in our deck. You know, we do need a draw engine to get there, but, you know, infinite mana is always good. Moving up into those instants, we have Kozilek's Command. So it's an X spell with two colorless specifically to go along with it. You get to choose two. It's also an Eldrazi spell, so again, the commander can copy it. You get to choose two of the three modes. You're either going to create X, Eldrazi Spawn, Scry X, draw a card, exile target creature with mana value X or less, or exile up to X cards from graveyards. All those modes are great. Uh, a little bit of graveyard hate goes a long way in Commander, especially with like the recursion you see running rampant throughout the format. Uh, the scry draw card is okay. The targeted removal is okay. I think the Scions are actually, or is it Scions? The Spawn, rather, uh, is actually pretty powerful here, right? You're going to replace all but two of the mana you spent to cast this. And, you know, now you also have some, like, bodies to chump block if you really needed to. But, like, I think it's pretty strong. Up next is actually the commander from the previous Eldrazi precon from, uh... Oh. What, like maybe a year ago at this point? Uh, but it's Zulazok, Void Gorger. So, six cost, seven, four, colorless spells. You cast from your hand with mana value seven or greater, have Cascade, Cascade. Uh, we have a lot of expensive Eldrazi to cast, and letting them Cascade, you know, is just gonna be a chef's kiss moment. Up next is Roaming Throne. Uh, so, Roaming Throne is great. Right, they have Ward 2 as the answer. You're going to choose, you know, Eldrazi. We're going to double up on all of their triggered abilities. And that's going to really just let us sort of pop off. We're also adding in Ulamog, the Defiler. So this lovely little 10 cost Eldrazi is going to exile a target opponent's library uh, up to half rounded up. That is a triggered ability on the stack, so we could double it up with, you know, uh, our commander paying the extra two mana for it. Cause like the Broken Reality follows that up. Uh, this is another expensive little Aldrazi boy, and by little, I mean kind of big. He's a 9-9 for 9. Whenever you cast this spell, up to two target players manifest two cards from their hand. For each card manifested this way, you're going to draw a card. Other colorless creatures you control get plus three, plus two, so they're just a universal lord. They actually make your scions and spawns pretty powerful. And last up, but certainly not least for the additions, we have Liberator Urza's Battle Thopter. So they are a flashable flying one, two for three. You get to the cast colorless spells and artifacts as though they had flash. This really lets you kind of cheat out a lot of power in the form of your Eldrazi, even on your opponent's turns. And whenever you cast a spell, if it costs more than the power that Liberator Urza Battle Thopter has, he gets a little bigger. We're really here for that flash ability, though. With all those additions out of the way, we are going to move down into the Honorable Mentions. We kept it much shorter this time. I feel like last time we had too many Honorable Mentions, uh, so nice and short and sweet. But we have Harrogast Erupting Nolkite. So this is an Eldrazi Dragon. It costs 9. It is a 6-6, six, six, but you could emerge it for 6 and 2 red. Uh, whenever you cast this spell, you may exile your hand. And if you do, you get to draw 3 cards. So a little bit of card draw. It does have flying. Also nice. And each creature spell you cast has emerge equal to its mana cost. This is honestly kind of key. Right? So, it's like, oh, this Eldrazi that I cast earlier isn't really doing the work anymore. I want to be able to cast more. Now all of your creatures could sacrifice themselves and, like, really put in a lot of mana value. Mana Crypt is going to follow that up. You know it, you love it. It's like 200 bucks though. 
but a zero cost mana rock that comes in, taps for two, is just good. Yeah, it might deal you damage, but the value you're getting by getting so far ahead in terms of mana available is worth it. And the last of the additions, or honorable mentions rather, is really just the Urza Lands. Uh, this is a colorless deck, you may as well run the Urza Lands. You know, get that extra mana off the lands as quick as possible, and run away with it. But, that's what we got. I'm Mech, aka the Energy King. If you enjoyed this video, found some value in it, go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Uh, with this being the last of the pre-cons from Modern Horizons 3, and Assassin's Creed coming out, I believe, next week, uh, we are going to do some custom builds for the Assassin's Creed decks. I've requested um, commanders to build around in my Discord, but if you have any others that you want to leave below in the comments, feel free. And until next time, good luck with your builds.